go. Chris Bishop's got away from California Chrome. And he's got a five, a six-leg lead as they come to the minor. A triple crown winner, a Breeders' Cup winner, a horse of a lifetime. Broadcasting live from the Capitol OTB Studios, this is Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. Good morning and welcome to Racing Across the Globe. Not just America, it's the globe. You can see the Saudi uh, races uh, to uh, my, well on the screen on your right. Uh, and we will get to that third race in just a moment, but we did want to kick off what will be kind of a modified edition of Racing Across America this morning. We're starting early because there's an early post time at Gulfstream. They have a great card today as well. They'll kick off with their race one at 11.30 this morning. Saudi Cup itself will be at 12.40. Do note the Clubhouse Racebook is already open and action is happening here at the Clubhouse Racebook. Come on down and uh, enjoy the early Saudi action. There's a bankroll here today uh, between 9 and 1. You can put your name in the hat <clears throat> to potentially get on the bankroll team. I'll be playing uh, with $500 this afternoon for the team. Should be a lot of fun, so come on down to the Clubhouse Racebook and enjoy all the great racing. Don't forget, we're, we've started early and it goes late. Uh, thoroughbred racing available here on the network uh, throughout the day, obviously, into the evening and the night thoroughbred racing uh, available tonight at Capital OTB and Capital OTB Bet, so keep that in mind as well. Seth Merrill live here in the studio. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our friends also at Gulfstream Park. Gulfstream Park, champions start here, and uh, this is one of those days where that is really true. They have a great card highlighted by the Fountain of Youth. A little bit later on, we'll be joined by some Fountain of Youth participants, potentially. Safi Joseph will join us. He has chance it entered. We interviewed both of them yesterday. And Safi said, being stuck outside, he was going to take a close look at the situation, and they may opt for Tampa Bay next week, but he'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and uh, Dale Roman with uh, Dennis's Moment, we'll talk with him as well. But right now, uh, they're, they're kind of trotting around race number three. It should be a fun race, a mile and seven-eighths on the turf, the third race at Saudi Arabia. The horse is taking the action of the one and the two, the one in particular, the Godolphin runner. I have no arguments against the one and the two, but... Nice 14 horse field with some good value elsewhere. I think I'll do a little box on the 3, 5, 8, and 10. Uh, the number 3 call, the wind, hasn't been seen since trying a couple of uh, marathons at Longchamp uh, and has a string of second place finishes underneath at these marathon distances. I think that one is a little bit interesting with Oliver Pelsier. Uh, uh, on board, uh, number five, Prince of Aaron, I think is a little bit interesting. Last seen in shot 10, but uh, wound up running well in the uh, Melbourne Cup prior uh, at a marathon distance. King's Advice, uh, a little bit interesting to me in some good form, running uh, marathon distances. And True Self maybe has to get back to some prior form, but Frankie DeTore on board, I think he could be interesting. So for me, three, five, eight, and 10, we're getting, we're getting six to one. The three's taking a little action. The five at 10 to one. Uh, the eight at a juicy 30 to one. The 10 at 11 to one. Uh, we'll see. I think uh, could have a little bit of fun uh, in here in this upcoming third from Saudi Arabia. We'll watch that one. We'll come back. Again, Safi Joseph, Dale Romans. We'll have those interviews about 945. It'll be uh, race number four from Saudi Arabia. We'll have that. We'll come back and uh, wrap up again this kind of early modified edition of Racing Across America. So just before we uh, send you to the race, I do want to hit on some news and notes in that there was kind of a, a pre-Saudi Cup day yesterday of nice racing in Saudi Arabia that was highlighted by four international jockey challenge races, seven male jockeys, seven female jockeys. Mike Smith took the challenge. He won two of the events. Um, but the first race in the challenge, there were four jockey challenge races. The first race in the challenge and the last race were won by female jockeys. So they made some history over there in Saudi Arabia. Congratulations to them, as well as to Mike Smith, who took down the challenge. All right, they're heading in the gate, race number three at Saudi Arabia. So we'll send you there. We'll come back after that with our interviews. Stay tuned. Racing across the globe continues. I'm riding Momkin in the previous race. Just keep your eye on the colours, because Ryan Moore and Frankie Dettori virtually identical here in the OTI silks. Jockey Cam. 
That'll be a terrific view after the race. And the loading process well underway for this Longines Turf Handicap. So, Michelle, tell us how you think this is going to pan out and who's going to win. You know, I think that the, the class does go to cross counter. I think that he had a ton of trouble last time out. And even though he is getting, you know, a lot more weight to carry here, I think he's the class of the field. I'd love to see him be victorious here. Jamie Spencer is riding Mekong here for his old friend Jamie Osborne, the pair who teamed up with Toast of New York in the 2014 Breeders' Cup Classic. And Jamie Osborne has been ribbing Bob Baffert about Rob that Baffert. race. Or <laughs> Rob Baffert, as he's been calling him all week. Um, you know, he did tell us that Mekong was a little bit of a head case. He was a private purchase, and they've really had to figure this horse out and try and get him to settle just from a mental standpoint. And that can be just as hard as the races that you're up against uh, when you talk about the way a horse is thinking. Last couple coming forward. For the Longines Turf Handicap, two and a half million dollars. Here's Richard Hoyles. Final handler moves away. The Longines Turf Handicap, the most valuable of our three races on the turf this afternoon, are off and racing. A little bit slow into stride was Mekong, who's posted them three or four length start. Long time which to recover, however, as DXB moves forward. That color change in the light and dark blue. Frankie Dottori fighting true self back in the field as wider out. Dramatic Device from 14 and King's Advice also tries to get over. Dramatic Device pressing on with things with DXB. Prince of Aaron early on with Contango, Twilight, Payment and Cross Counter, who's got a nice seam up the rails. They're being tracked through by Call to the Bar as they take the first turn. So as they settle down, DXB one off the fence with Cross Counter in the blue jacket disputing second with Dramatic Device. Contango shows in fourth in black and white with Prince of Aaron just ahead of Paul to the bar. While I play my trap three wide. King's advice could go forward. Settles now in field on the outside of Call the Wind. Then the starred cap of Downdraft is on the outside of Mavahim. And as they straighten towards the back, the white cap of True Self towards the back with Ibu and the slow starting Mekong. So DXB out in front for Mekong Barcelona bringing the field past the stands over a circuit to travel. Leads by two lengths from Dramatic Device in the green and white. Cross counter in the blue jacket on the inside a further neck away. Left half to Contango. Then the red blue colors of Prince of Aaron on the inside of the strong traveling call to the bar in the blue and gray jacket up the inside go call the wind white colors with kings and ice and twilight payment who's had a bit of a tough trip so far then behind these towards the inside we have true self as they continue their progress as they make the bend mekong still towards the inside of hebo is also towards the tail as they turn away so dxb it is who is out in front from dramatic device hangs badly towards the outside there dramatic device effectively run off the track in second place racing now in says cross counter as they make the turn passing the 1351 turf spread side dramatic device is no longer with the field, so DXB leads cross counter half length to Contango. Fourth place on the inside for Prince of Aaron, with fifth place on the inside, call to the bar. Making ground is Paul Wind moving close of King's Advice Twilight Payment. Then the star on the cap of Downdraft and the blue yellow hoops with Mahim coming next. Still quite well back in the field is True Self as they make their progress towards the exit to the back straight and racing towards the final 800 meters. And as they make the turn, it is still DXB but now being ridden along. Contango to Luis Morales on the outside, cross counter in the blue jacket. Then towards the outer uh, and moving through on the outside is called to the bar with Prince of Aaron. They make the turn, then King's Advice for Tango. A big Ryan moving up here for the big shot leads from DXB. Miles towards the outside is cross counter. Who now need to make some progress. Prince of Aaron, ball the wind going well, just playing the leaders, but needs a break. Setting sail for home. Contango, cross counter. Prince of Aaron balls out all the time. The eye drawn to call the wind with a white face who's switching amongst horses. Contango, cross counter. Call the wind for Pellier through the eye of the needle. Then Prince of Aaron, true sail for Frankie Dottori. And then towards the outside, Mekong. Call the wind has swept to the lead. Mekong for Jamie Spencer and Prince of Aaron down the outside. But it's call the wind. Patience personified by Pellier. Weave through in the straight and will win the long jeans turf handicap for Freddie Head and France. Call the wind, it was who won. In second, Econ, Prince of Aaron placed again in another major staying race. Contango out of his skin in fourth with cross counter, then true self behind those twilight payments. Even picked up a few stragglers. They clearly called to the bar who didn't last home. Likewise, Mafahim, DXB, also towards the tail with King's advice. Olivier Pellier, full of horse at the top of the home straight. Weave through and well in command at the line. Econ came from the back for Jamie Osborne and Jamie spent.
uh, I like the uh, uh, boxed up three five eight and ten. It came up. I think it was three nine five. Call the wind uh, off a string of second place finishes. Uh, does get it done. String of second place finishes at those marathon distances, but uh, found a little room there in the stretch and uh, got it done under Oliver uh, Peslier. Um, at uh, what are we looking at? Seven to one, so a nice little price there. Mekong didn't have in my mix, but I think Mekong did wind up second at twenty to one. I did like the five Prince of Aaron. I think he wound up third at eleven to one there. Um, but a nice addition of the uh, Longines handicap there, mile and seven eighths on the turf. All right, let's get into it because we do have a couple of interviews to get to before race number four in Saudi Arabia. Let's start things out with uh, Safi Joseph Jr. Uh, he has chance at potentially in the Fountain of Youth today. He'll talk about that. Uh, they're going to look at the situation. And I've checked. I haven't seen any news so far this morning as far as uh, uh, chance it. But things may switch up for him. But he also has tonalist shape, the nice three-year-old filly in the Devona Dale. He's got a horse named Lefebvre in the uh, South Beach, or excuse me, in the Honey Fox uh, uh, on the uh, undercard of stakes this afternoon at Gulfstream as well. And we caught up with his winner uh, a couple of weeks ago in the Royal Delta Cookie Dough. Got a little update on her as well. So up next, Safi Joseph. A little bit later, Dale Romans. Stay tuned. Been second in a lot of good races. Of the stakes action, and we'll talk, uh, start things out. Chance it. Uh, we're 24 hours out. We're actually recording on Friday, and uh, there may be some changes coming up for Chance it, but we'll hit on that in a moment. Safi, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Thanks for having me on. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate you taking the time. And again, Chance it. Uh, one of the likely favorites uh, in the Fountain of Youth, obviously, but things kind of changed up. I want to say it was four or five days ago that I was looking at a, like a field of six and then the entry box closed and it wound up to be a field of 12. You wound up on the outside with chance it. So again, we were talking before we went on and, and texting back and forth. And so uh, you're still kind of in the decision-making process with chance it as far as the fountain of youth. Talk about as we are now talking on Friday morning, what the decision-making process will be over the next 24 hours. Well, we're just trying to see if, um, if any scratches happen, and we'll just wait as long as possible to decide. I mean, if this was, say, we don't want to make an excuse for the draw, but if it was a race, say, just for instance, the Kentucky Derby, you get your draw and you live with it and you move, you move forward, whether it be good or bad. But this is a race to get there where it's a building point. So it's important that we don't waste the race. And that, that's the, the importance also. You don't want to be inconvenienced by a draw two to three lengths. At least you're going to be inconvenienced. Because sometimes you're only talking two to three lengths is the difference between winning or, or running third or fourth. <laughs> and, and I will say, uh, Mike Welch from the Daily Racing Forum on Twitter put out some stats. And he said since the reconfiguration of the track at a mile and a 16th, post 12 has won three out of 36 times. If there was one scratch, post 11 is four out of 54. So you may be up against it a little bit. Um, and again, that we're talking on Friday morning. You expect to make the decision sometime, what, tomorrow morning? Yeah, I would say tomorrow morning is when we're going to make the decision, or our earliest probably this this evening. And give yeah. me give me an idea what what your options are if you uh, decide to pass on the Fountain of Youth, uh, Tampa Bay Derby. You may be looking there. Or what what are the options? Yeah, Tampa Bay Derby is definitely an option. Uh, something that the owners and myself discussed. And it, it's, it's next week. It's the same same amount of points and the same distance basically. So. It's definitely. It's not to say we have a. We have to wait three or four weeks for a race. There's a race right around the corner. Yeah, very good. Uh, let's uh, go back. I'm going to pull up the replay of the Mucho Macho Man. Um, and uh, I was reading uh, an interview you did. TDN uh, had a nice interview with you, talking a little bit about Chance It, and it sounded like stepping out of for the first time that restricted company. Chance It early in the career had been in some state bred races and then was in that nice rich New York Stallion series. And so the Mucho Macho Man stepping in against Open Stakes Company. This was a nice win and, and you kind of labeled it a gutsy win. Give us your thoughts as we watch here. Number two Chance It will win by a head over as seen on TV and running third notably Sol Volante who went on to win the Sam Davis over at Tampa Bay, but give us your thoughts as you came out of this win in the Mucho Macho Man with Chance It. Oh, I thought, I, I, just, I thought it was a gutsy performance coming off a layoff four months, and I didn't expect the Mucho Macho Man to come up that tough. I mean, I, I had a lot of respect for as seen on TV going in. So Volante, he was kind of unknown. I think he's a, I, I, I knew he was a very good turf horse going into the race, but 
seeing him come back and win now after he's obviously equally as good on the dirt, so it just shows how good of a horse he is. Um, to have to run that hard off a of layoff, still get the job done. Speaks um, very much of how good chance it is. Um, he, at the eighth pole, in my opinion, he looked beaten, and I and you would expect that off a of layoff that he, he he would that would be enough for him, and he found a way to get back there and win. Yeah, it, the the layoff was September until January, and just as a handicapper and watching races as much as I do to see horses come back on the inside like that, more often than not, that doesn't work out. What does that say about his mental uh, strength, uh, just to to come back like that on the inside and get the gutsy win? I mean, that that shows that's his character. I mean, that's his kind of horse. He's very, he's very, he's a lot. Of, he has, there's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of. He has a high cruising speed, and he has stamina, in my opinion. And that those are the qualities that make a, a really good horse. That whole race, if you watch, he kind of sat the trip where Paco, on, I've seen on TV, though he had him inside, and Paco was keeping him in there. So he, 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 got, he, he got a tough trip, basically. You know what I mean, And he still found a way to dig in. And, I mean, his, his talent, as far as talent goes, he's an he's a extremely talented horse. But things have to go, always go right, and they always have to show up on the day, but... I don't think we we definitely don't doubt his talent. What Tyler Gaffleone have to say after he got off after the Mucho Macho man? <laughs> I, I think he was relieved that he won also, but <laughs> he's been working him since. And Tyler after after his last work, Tyler feels very confident where we're at. I mean, I mean now it's going to be a, it's a tough race again. We've got the other be a corn horse at the Indian in there. You got Shotsky. You got Dennis Dennis's moment coming in. It's a feel that's and then you got Chad Horse that won him for. Um, Broke his as well. It, it's a it's a very deep feel. It's a, it's a good feel. Um, and and it, I would ask uh, how he's been doing since the race, but I'm looking at the workouts underneath and that nice bullet uh, back on the 24th. It seems like he he came out of that race and he's still on his toes. Yeah, he's 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 trained poorly. He's, he's he showed good energy and his works have been. He's always a good workhorse, but they have been as good as you could want or as good as you can you can get. Uh, um, it, we're, we're very happy with where, where we're at right now. The post, is, like I said, the post is a bit. We just want to make the right decision. You know? Like we're, we, we want to do what give him the best chance. Like I, mean, like I say, were you guys expecting uh, at four or five days ago? It seemed like a field of about half a dozen. No, it, it was a complete shock. I mean, the day before <laughs> the entry, I think Mike Welsh asked me, "What do you think of the post?" Because. At a one turn mile here, the post doesn't really matter. But at a mile on 16th, everyone knows goal streams, the post outside draws are, yeah. uh, don't have, uh, they're, they're very, they, they decrease your chances. So I, I, I told Mike Wells, I was like, the post doesn't really matter. It's only eight horses. I mean, you never want, if it was 10 or 12, then I'll be concerned. And then the next day, I think I read that afternoon, there was a the next horse that came out of the race. There was only seven horses, basically. And uh, to see 12, it was a shocker. I literally found out there were 12. About two minutes before they did the draw on, <laughs> on TV, I mean uh, on, on television, so it was a shocker. And then to draw the twelve, it makes it even. It puts us in a position that we never, I mean, we never foresee we, we have to make this kind of tough decision because we never thought about any other race except for the founder of the year. Yeah, it's and got- now here we are after entries thinking about. Another race. Yeah, it's got to be disappointing that it wound up that way. But, uh, you know, you have a talented horse. You do have that option uh, next week over in Tampa. It'll be interesting to see. Just before we move on, give us a little overview because, again, it was fun to read the TDN uh, article where you said, you know, I came to, from Barbados to race in America and be in uh, positions like this. So just talk a little bit in general what it's like to have a horse that has this kind of talent to rack up some points and, and maybe wind up uh, in church at Churchill on the first Saturday in May. I feel very thankful because I've been here nine years now, and this is the first horse that I've ever had with, with this kind of ability. And to to be here, I, I know how it's, it's taken a while to get here, and I'm, I'm forever thankful and, and that the owners are giving giving us this horse, and we have a lot of other good owners still giving us giving us the horses that are eventually going to get here for us again. All right, let's move on. We wish you good luck whichever uh, direction you go with Chance It, but uh, let's move a little bit earlier because you also have a nice little three-year-old filly on the card, uh, on a nice stakes card Saturday at Gulfstream. The Devona Dale is for the three-year-old fillies going a mile, and you have toneless shape. We're going to go back and take a look at the forward gal from February 1st. Toneless shape, <clears throat> excuse me, will be the number six source in here, getting it done pretty convincingly she is now undefeated four for four 
What are your thoughts on coming out of this race to forward gal and how is she doing coming into Saturday's Devona Dale? She's doing well. She's going to have to face a tall task. She's going to have to improve again. I mean, Fletcher's Philly is a very nice Philly. Um, Spice is nice. She won impressively for first MO. And Byroness is unbeaten also. And there's a few other Phillies in there that are decent. So she's definitely going to have to up her A game. Um, but she's trained, she's trained well. We got her started back into forward gal. Thought it was a good stepping stone to, to get her back in a, her three zero uh, campaign. She she wants she doesn't want to be sprinting. I mean she she's been doing that because of class. A one time going a mile was her most impressive race, and I feel like if she can run back to that, it's going to take a good horse to be there. The buyers people, the numbers people noted that the number went back. Uh, the last race of last year. Uh, she won with an 89 buyer, and the forward gal was her seasonal debut, and she had a 70 buyer. But I always look, I mean, she won so easily. How how, how fast was she supposed to go to, to knock the buyer forward? But do you put any credence in that? Were you looking at the number and, and giving that any kind of thought? No, I mean, obviously the numbers came out slow. And that, you know, was, but I think, like going into the race two, two, two weeks before, she spiked a little temper. She, she got off her feet, okay. but she came, ar- she came around quickly. And... Uh, I just think she doesn't want to be doing those kind of things. She's doing that because of her talent. You know? I mean, I think she's going to be even get better when she goes to a turn. She's, she, there's a lot of stamina to her. I think she's a filly that would go a mile and eight, mile and a quarter, no problem. Um, I think that's when you're going to see her best, when she gets to go longer. And This is the first time she's going to go long again. I mean, since the hot, hut. And that's why we feel going into the race, that we feel like we're sitting on a, on a, on a, good, on a good shot. She's... But we, all, we also know that how good Spice is nice was. You know? I mean, so we're, we hope... Uh, we, we, we can have a feeling that could be there, but we don't. Spice is nice is a big unknown in the race, how good she is. Spice is nice, the uh, debut winner for uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uh, that, yeah, it will be interesting to see what she does on Saturday. But uh, tonalist shape, also the outside post position, but it's the nine in the one turn mile. I'm guessing that's not much of a concern. No, it's not much of a concern. I mean, one turn race, you have like five eighths of a mile for the jock to yeah. make the decision. Uh, that that's the only reason I make the the miles it seems so uh, significant because the, the the run to the turn is basically I would say it's not it's very short I don't, I don't know how short it is but it is, it's not I don't even think of, it's a half a long basically I mean so how fast like there's not much room to to get across basically yeah you're you're in a position where you're, you're trying to get a good spot going into the turn is very difficult, as those uh, Mike Welch stats uh, kind of implied earlier. All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, another stakes run you have earlier on the card, the Honey Fox Lefebvre. I'm going to pull up the South Beach from uh, January 25th. She's going to run third in here. I thought it was a nice third. Atomic Blonde, the uh, three uh, wins. Mitchell Road won, runs second. Uh, Lefebvre, the number four, runs third. Atomic Blonde is back in on Saturday. But just a handicapping and looking at this race, I thought the Honey Fox on Saturday, pretty evenly matched field. And I thought of this good kind of closing third place finish last time in the South Beach. Lefebvre is coming into it, I think, in, in good form. What are your thoughts on Lefebvre on Saturday? Yeah, he's a filly that we got. Um, we took over the last two starts. And she's run well both times. I mean, both times, you could, if you watch the replays, you could, you could make legit excuses. She... She got a little trouble last time. She didn't really get out till very late, but she still ran well. So we feel like this is this is another tougher race again. So um, we feel like she's in good form again. We feel like she's going to improve again. But is she going to improve enough? That's going to be the question mark. And uh, last time again, number wise, that was a lifetime best buyer number. Do you get the feeling she is on the improve a little bit? Yes, I mean last time we, we thought she improved from the first race we had her. She showed those signs, and I think like she's showing those signs again that she is going to improve again. She um she needs to get a trip because twice she hasn't got a trip, so hopefully tomorrow she can get a trip. But I mean, third place in sometimes the trip is what makes you win or lose. And if she can get the trip and run the house she's been running, she, she's she's good value in that race. And uh, looking at the ownership there, you mentioned your owners earlier, Madiket and Bob LaPenta. And as you've uh, risen up the, the training ranks down there, the owners have showed up. So it's nice to see uh, big owners like that uh, backing you and putting some horses in your barn. And just before we let you go, Safi, wanted to go back a couple of weeks and get a little update. Uh, you won the Royal Delta back in the middle of February. We're going to take a look at Cookie Dough uh, winning here, the number six horse. Nice win in the uh, grade three Royal Delta. Give us a little update on Cookie Dough. She came out of that race well. Um, the, the buyer figures, I think she ran a 92. Oh, nice. And then she ran fast on the rags also. So 
So we're very happy to ha- have her again. I mean, the, we, that was her first run for us. The owner, Gilbert, she was already a, a well-spoken uh, filly or form spoke, spoke for herself. So we're thankful to get these opportunities with, with these amazing horses. Um, we haven't really decided yet where we're going to go. I mean, before we took her over, the plan was always to go to the Royal Delta and, and then the Apple Blossom. So I would say we're probably... The Apple Blossom is definitely under consideration. Oh. Um, and I would say she, if she does go there, she'll go there with... Um, no, not run, she won't run before that. Nice. Uh, have you started horses over in Oakland before? Yeah, we ran two. Matt Bridget ran there last year and he ran there this year again. Uh, we run two at Oakland. Uh, very good, very good. So we'll look possibly for her over there. Wanted a little update there. Uh, Safi, again, uh, appreciate uh, the uh, the time. Again, we're 24 hours out, so we'll know uh, sometime uh, Saturday wh- what the uh, game plan will be with Chancet. But again, either way, we wish you a lot of luck with Chancet. Your other stakes runners on Saturday and going forward. And uh, if we don't talk to you in the meantime, we're, we're going to be down for live coverage for a Florida Derby weekend. So hopefully we'll catch up with you then. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks. Take care, guys. Appreciate the time. Safi Joseph, again, a nice stakes contingent showing up Saturday down at Gulfstream Park. Welcome back, and uh, thanks to Safi Joseph. Again, I, I've been checking. I haven't seen anything, uh, any updates on uh, the status of chance. That I, you know, from the way he was talking, it seems like mm, next week with the Tampa Bay Derby because, and again, I quoted those Mike Welch stats. You know, you get hung outside in that configuration. You're, you're up against it a little bit. And as Safi said, you know, chasing points, you don't want to waste a race. So it wouldn't surprise me. But keep your eyes, if you're, if you're looking at chance, it, uh, keep your eyes on the, the various news uh, services. Well, certainly alert it when that becomes uh, clear uh, during the day here on the network. Uh, and it was 3.95 in that third at uh, Saudi Arabia. So I ran first and third with my uh, little box there at uh, some decent little prices, but a uh, nice win for a call the wind in the third race at Saudi Arabia. Uh, fourth race is about 13 minutes away. That gives us time to jump over to our interview with Dale Romans. I also talked to him yesterday. He, all eyes are going to be on Dennis's moment this afternoon. Now, the three-year-old return to the races. I know uh, various uh, Derby top ten lists. Uh, Dennis's moment is at the top of some of those. So a lot of people are going to be looking and see what happens with this uh, seasonal debut for Dennis's moment. We talked uh, clearly about Dennis's moment with uh, Dale. Mr. Freeze is in an earlier race. We touched on that one. And Dale had a nice maiden winner a couple of weeks ago that we talked about. And that one may be on the Derby Trail for Dale. So we'll hit on all of that. Coming up next, trainer Dale Romans. Joined now by Dale Romans. He, of course, has Dennis's moment with the three-year-old debut coming up in the Fountain of Youth on Saturday afternoon. Dale, good morning. Good morning, Seth. Happy to have you on and talk a little Dennis's moment. We'll also hit on Mr. Freeze, who's uh, in one of the undercard stakes as well. But let's start out with Dennis's moment Dale, we talked to you, I want to say the middle of January, because I'm looking at the workouts here for Dennis's moment, and I think he put in two workouts by then. He'd had the uh, January 11th workout just to kind of stretch his legs and get going, then it showed improvement uh, on January 18th. And I want to say we, we talked to you just about that time, and you were happy with the first couple of works. Uh, seven works now under his belt so far in 2020. We're going to take a look. We have some video of the, uh, the most recent, the February 23rd workout. Just give us your impressions in the morning, how he's, he's progressed from that first workout in January coming into Saturday in the mornings. i tell you something, he has not missed a beat. There's not one day that we got to the barn and had to change the schedule with this horse. And, uh, he's just done everything we've asked him to do. He's moved forward in his works. When I want him to go fast, he went fast. I want him to go slower, he slowed it down for me a little bit. He's just showing a lot more maturity right now. And uh, I saw you, Jason Blewett, uh, had a little piece with you. I think during the, the afternoon yesterday, he plugged it in. And uh, this workout we're looking at, uh, it seemed like you were pretty happy with the workout, the most recent workout coming into the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, very pleased. I mean, we were just breaking off from the pole and sitting still on him, let him do his own thing. And, you know, you're not going to get him fit one more race. So if he wasn't fit going into it, he wasn't going to get there. So we just wanted to get a nice, sharp nurse so I'd let him do his thing and be happy at and uh, I think it, it worked out well. Uh, and I'm assuming, uh, is Tammy riding? Yes, yeah, yeah. She's the only one that ever gets on Dennis. And so uh, she was happy, I'm assuming, too, with the work. No, nah, she said she was, and believe me, if she wasn't, she let me know quickly. <laughs> Very good. Uh, don't pull any punches with her. <laughs> uh, and, you know, from, from when we talked to you in January, I'm guessing – because I remember you, you mentioned it then. This was the spot. The Fountain Youth was, was always kind of the game plan for the, 
the three-year-old debut? That's been the plan since way back before the BS going to bring us up. And were you surprised, because I talked to, to Safi Joseph a little bit earlier, uh, we were talking, uh, he, has, he has chance at potentially going, um, and he said he was a little bit shocked, because it was only like three or four days ago, there was a field of maybe six or seven in here. Were you kind of surprised when it wound up to be a field of 12? Well, I'll tell you, I entered, it was probably 10.30 or something, quarter 11, something like that, and I made uh, number six, and they said they were expecting one more. Pick up the overnight, there's 12 horses in it. <laughs> Does that change up your strategy at all? No, it doesn't change my strategy at all. I mean, it, 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 the only thing it does is, you know, there's more potential to have problems with more horses in the race. And, uh, but I'm not, we're going to be up closer to the pace. We've got a good post. I was more worried about before the draw because I didn't want to end up out in the 12-hole yeah. Gulf Street, one of mile 16. But when we drew the five, you know, it didn't really matter. Yeah, you're right square in the middle of things, pretty much. Uh, right. Give, give me some thoughts uh, on, you know, he was last seen, obviously, in the, the ill-fated Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but that was November of his two-year-old season. Now we're, you know, a few months into the three-year-old season, and he's a March full, so he's getting close to his actual three-year-old birthday. How has he transitioned from two to three physically? Well, he's, he's, he's done well. He's probably grown, put a little more muscle on. But, he, he, you know, there wasn't a whole lot he needed to change it to. He was such a good push button but horse. But, you know, I see that, like most horses do when they turn three, they start to get a little more arrogant, a little more understanding what they're doing. <laughs> and it's more about attitude change than it is physical change. Do you, do you like that? Do you like a horse that has a little attitude? Hey, every professional athlete to be successful better be a little bit arrogant. <laughs> I like that. Very good. Uh, well, so, you know, if you're going to stand over a three-foot putt for millions of dollars, you better think you're going to make it. <laughs> that's my problem. I'm not even going for yeah. millions of dollars, and I don't think I'm going to make it. That's a, <laughs> Uh, I'm the same way as you. I say I can run for $20 million purse and can't make a putt for $20. Uh, give us your thoughts just overall. Uh, what, what are your thoughts coming into Saturday, and what are your expectations for Dennis's moment Saturday afternoon? Well, I mean, it's uh, they're high expectations. I expect uh, everything goes well. There's no problem, so he's going to run a huge race, and, and uh, I'm, we're going over to win. Yeah, very good. And so uh, we wish you a lot of luck there uh, in the three-year-old debut with Dennis's moment. Let's go a little earlier on the card. We're going to pull up uh, the uh, the replay of uh, the Pegasus World Cup, and we're going to look at uh, Mucho Macho Man. Uh, excuse me. It, we're going to look at Mach Mucho Gusto running first and Mr. Freeze running second. This was a nice little performance for Mr. Freeze. Again, Mucho Gusto, nice horse, wins the Pegasus World Cup, but Mr. Freeze, the number five, winds up running second. And as I say, a nice effort. What were your thoughts coming out of the Pegasus World Cup, and what are your thoughts coming into uh, Saturday with Mr. Freeze? Well, I couldn't be more pleased with this horse and how he turned it around last year of a couple of bad efforts, and uh, we got him turned back around and and he's had a, had a good end of last year and a great start to this year. You know, he's, he couldn't ask him to do any better either. It's going to be a big day for us tomorrow. And, and it sounds like from what, I, what I've heard and read that this wasn't necessarily the game plan, uh, this uh, Gulfstream Park mile, but it, it, the way he was working, it just became obvious this was the spot to go. Well, it, it was a soft target all along, let's say that. And then, the you know, the Godolphin Mile's out there for us in another month. But after the work last Saturday, I said, might as well give him this race, and then if he runs big like we expect, we'll point towards Gustav Mile. Pegasus World Cup a mile and an eighth this race on Saturday, as the name implies, a mile, Gulfstream Park Mile. But mile seems to be a, a, a favored distance for him. He won the ACAC -AC earlier last year uh, at Churchill Down, so I'm assuming you're, you're thinking that the mile distance, the one-turn mile, will be right in his wheelhouse. Now, I'm not going to say that he won't stretch out, but I think he's going to be a, that he's a really top miler. And um, so that's that's why we backed him up. But I'm still I'm still convinced that he'll he'll go further. Also, if he's just a fast horse, he'll do it all. And, and is he a horse who potentially is getting a little bit better as he gets older? Uh, well, he had a good early three year old. Yeah. Then he had a little step back, and we we gave him some time, and he came back big. But I don't know. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering because, as I say, that second to Mucho Gusto in the Pegasus World Cup, I, I think, bodes well for uh, 2020. Um, and, Dale, before we let you go, I just wanted to touch on one more, go back to the middle of February, because you had a nice little maiden breaker, and I'm wondering what might be next for attachment rate. We're going to take a look 
at attachment rate, number three horse here, winning, and winning pretty convincingly in start number three. Um, he just seems to be better now as a three-year-old. Had one start last June uh, at Churchill uh, as a two-year-old, but the two races as a three-year-old says this one might, might be very nice. So give me your thoughts on attachment rate and where we might see this one show up next. A super talented horse, and he's booked on Wednesday's flight to come to the Jewel at the Big A, making my annual trip. Oh, very good. Uh, Running to Gotham. Ah, very good. Uh, again, uh, a couple of good starts as a, uh, a three-year-old now. So the game plan is to maybe get him some points, and, and so he's on the Derby Trail, essentially. Well, yeah, every three-year-old that wins like that should be on the Derby Trail. So we'll hit the Gotham and then figure out where to go from there. I'll have to come back with at least once to get winner. Uh, very good. All right. Uh, Dale, uh, always appreciate the time. You certainly wish you a lot of good luck on Saturday and, and going forward with attachment rate as well. We were talking before we went on the air. We'll uh, we'll see you down at Gulfstream, Florida Derby weekend. Sounds good, Seth. Thanks, Seth. Thanks for calling. Dale, uh, appreciate it. Dale Romans, again, uh, has the uh, favorite Dennis's moment. Seasonal debut as a three-year-old in the Fountain of Youth on Saturday. Welcome back. Seth Merrow in the studio, uh, racing across America. Thanks to Dale Romans, uh, and good luck this afternoon with Dennis's moment. As I say, all eyes on Dennis's moment in the Fountain of Youth later today. All eyes on the Saudi Cup at about 1240 uh, before uh, things uh, really get underway stakes-wise at uh, Gulfstream on just a big day of racing. I'm joined now by Mike Callahan from the marketing department. Mike, uh, a little bit later, uh, after we watch the Saudi race, we're going to uh, let some of the, the weekend folks uh, get a, an intro to uh, the new betting platform. Just a little brief uh, look at it. But, Mike, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. You were out in the, the front side of the parlor. Again, we opened the doors early today. You said there was a nice little crowd out there taking a look at the early Saudi Yeah, there's about, yeah, there's about 15 people in there right now. We have a, a nice breakfast uh, section set up for you, so stop on down. Racing's already begun at, uh, for the Saudi Cup, and it, it's only going to get better as the day goes on. Uh, including the $20 million race. So, again, doors are already open. Swing down to the clubhouse. It's going to be a great day. And as I've been checking Twitter, I did want to alert folks that uh, at Gulfstream today, there are some nice guarantees. Uh, the Rainbow Six has a 300000 guarantee. The Late Pick 5 at Gulfstream, a 500000 guarantee. How about this? The Late Pick 4? Three quarters of a million dollar guarantee on the late. Pick again, four. when you see those numbers, it's <laughs> it's easy to jump in because, again, you never know. Yeah. You never know in those uh, circumstances you know, maybe you're able to single a couple horses, maybe you're able to repeat a couple tickets and just, you know, a couple $1,500 tickets on top of each other, and you can make a big score. Again, you really never know in horse racing. So, And uh, we'll, we'll get you that Saudi race because there's uh, about two minutes to post. Uh, so we'll get you the fourth at Saudi Arabia, and then we'll come back for a little a little brief segment before we wrap up the show. But, Mike, you and I were talking a, a few minutes ago about the Saudi Cup itself. I said I'm going to go with maximum security. i got to admit I'm, I'm a homer. I'm kind of going with, with the home team. I have maximum security over McKinsey, over Midnight Bijou, over Mucho Gusto. Uh, you're, you're going maybe a little different yeah, direction. Yeah, I have a little though. bit of opposing. Just based on the way I think the race may set up, because I, I follow Dubai a lot. You know that. I do the For the one sheet, I do the selections for Dubai. Capizano is a horse from Dubai and also North America. Those horses love to go to the lead. It's the only way that they have a chance. And Capizano is probably one of those horses of the two that I talked about with North America that actually really has a realistic chance of going wire to wire in this spot. Problem is, that's the way that Maximum Security likes to run. McKinsey's not going to be too far off. And there's probably going to be about four or five horses that are really compacted together. So if that's the case, I feel as though a mid-pack or a horse that's closing, and I watched the races yesterday uh, from the two-day festival, and there were a couple of horses that could close. So I, I wanted to take a look. Maybe there's a track bias with speed. I didn't see it. It actually showed to be quite fair. I like Ben Battle. He's the Godolphin horse that has been running against the best on turf, and he really was never able to break through. But I think he's one that at 7-1 to one, you want to take a look at. And also the girl in the, in the group, Midnight Bizu. I think she's going to be sitting about 5th or 6th, probably expecting the hot pace that could potentially happen in there. And she's sitting at around 8-1. to one. So I'm looking at those 7, 8-1 to one shots. I know maximum security right now is 5-2. to two. Uh, McKinsey, I think, is 3-1. to one. So for me, it's a little too short. But uh, that's the way that I saw it. I know you could go a bunch of different ways, and they're loading the gate right now race for number, race number 4. Race so. number 4, kind of an interesting mile-and-a-quarter race. Uh, there's actually some first-time starters in here. Otherwise, I would give some opinions. But with the first-time starters, I have no opinions. But take it away. Race number 4 at Saudi Arabia. We'll be back in a couple. As the runners prepare to... Lead the stall. Stall 13, Sahab, just causing for a little bit of assistance, uh, his rider. And a 
Wrangler has gone in to uh, help there, just to hold the horse nice and steady. And they're off and racing. And from the stalls, Jellimar was the one who was a little bit slow to go. What about Alcalidia towards the inside in the white sheepskin noseband? Plenty of greys, as you can see, in this particular contest. Number 10, Talab Alcalidia, is moving forward as well in the early stages. Black cap on Aoun now, moves forward in the noseband, and the similar colours with the Czech cap belongs to Zayad. They're followed by Hadrez in the plain white colours. The two with the black jacket, the one with the V pointing up, is uh, Mutawakel Alcalidia, who is just ahead of number 6, Mubasha Alcalidia. Towards the back in the early stages, Stages, Masha Alcalidia in the blue sheepskin noseband towards the Ria Jelimar, who was a little bit slow to go. Shabar in the brown and orange colours, and then the red and white jacket belong to Amwaj as they settle down. So as they make their progress down the back straight, Talab Alcalidia has moved forward to dispute the lead with the nosebanded Wathabat Alcalidia. In third place is Ayun in the black cap. Check cap belongs to Zayad, who is in fourth place. In fifth place, in the blue blinkers and the noseband, is Masha Alcalidia on the inside of Mutawaka. Alcalidia who comes next. Olivier Pellier towards the outer on Medaf Athbar is just worse than midfield. Towards the back at this stage is Sahab as they prepare now to turn out of the back straight. So out in front number 10, Talab Alcalidia has the lead from Wathabat Alcalidia in second in the noseband. Hadres is pushed along with Aoun. Around outside making some progress is Mubasha Alcalidia. Uh, that's in the inverted triangle and then towards the inside still Mashur Alcalidia in the blue headgear just nosing through. But Talab Alcalidia it is who has the lead as they Straighten and seems at this stage to have a fair bit of horse underneath. A confident look. Wathabat Alcalidia moves through into second. Aoun is third. Then Masha Alcalidia. Hadrez comes next. Also picking up well Mutawakel Alcalidia in the black cap. So a sea of white and black here. Wathabat Alcalidia has the lead. From in second place, Masha Alcalidia, who's staying on stoutly. Then Hadrez is still staying on down the outside. Mubasha Alcalidia now out in front. Things getting desperate for Taleb Alcalidia with 200 to travel. Hadrez has moved alongside Masha. Masha Alcalidia for second place with Mubasha Alcalidia in third, but still Talab Alcalidia has the lead. It's a couple of lengths and he's not for catching. Number 10, Talab Alcalidia will win for Roberto Perez. Home in second is Hadrez. In third, Masha Alcalidia. In fourth place, Mubasha Alcalidia ahead of Amwaj, who came home fifth. Late progress for Shaba, who was sixth. Ayun dropped out but just beat Zayad and they trailed back to the likes of Mutawakel Alcalidia and all the way back to the last two, Jelamar and Medaf Athbar. Ten one. I'm not uh, totally sure what what was behind. So hold your tickets uh, there. But uh, ten one. Talib Al Khalidia of of the Al Khalidia family. There was one, two, three, four, uh, five Al Khalidia horses. Uh, he was uh, fifteen to one on the morning line, and he went off at nine to one. So he got a nice little. Price there. And that's the nice thing. I mean, oh, we're talking payers. about it. I'm saying that that's uh, that's not the right. Hmm, that's interesting. The ten is a different uh, name. So I wonder, are they they couldn't be going by post positions, right? Oh, you might be in race three. Oh yeah, uh, good call there. I didn't there we change. go. We're actually doing a whole uh, tutorial right now, so, live. So I'm just change up my race. He might actually get better odds since he was 15. No, he went down to four. Okay. He became the co-favorite. So the, so the money talks. Yeah, they have the money know. talks. Yeah, co-favorite at four to one, down from a 15 to one morning line. Yeah, so they knew. Even they in Saudi yeah, exactly. Arabia, they know uh, occasionally. But, but the prices it, have been great. I mean, that's yeah, a, when you get a, a they $10, know a $10 horse, horse, that's yeah. okay. Uh, and yesterday there was, you know, uh, multiple huge exactas. I mean, there was... Some horses that were rounded out tries at like 76 to 1. I mean, all you need to do is hit one of these races, and I feel like you'll be okay. Yeah, so. when you get field sizes like this, there's always value. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's been it's been awesome so far. But I know you wanted to – we got to yeah, touch yeah, upon yeah. the – I uh, have Mike in again. We said uh, uh, in the last segment we would do uh, just a, a little brief uh, intro to the new betting platform for folks who maybe uh, – Tune in on the weekends. You're working during the week. Uh, you and Shannon had a nice Q&A uh, earlier this week uh, during the morning with some folks calling in with questions. We've had the, you and I take the, the piece that we've been running all week long, too. But I thought uh, maybe come in live and just for a few minutes, just kind of, again, give a brief intro to people. I, I have said 
each day when I've been in here on OTB Live. If you're brand new to the platform, um, and maybe there are the weekend warriors who don't play much during the weekend, so they may be just firing it up today for the first time. Right, that's time. exactly why we wanted to be on this morning. So. I, I've said sign in, go to the Bet Now drop down menu, and click on TV. And I think it's pretty intuitive uh, to the point where I think people can get started betting and then hit click on buttons and test things out and do some of the bells and whistles that, that you'll kind of point out. Yeah, uh, navigation also. is key. Uh, I'll be able to walk you through some things, but again, kind of feel it out yourself when you're, you're going through it this afternoon and this morning with this, the Saudi Cup. But you're actually going to be able to see my computer here in a second, so I'll be walking you through it. So this is what you're generally going to see when you log in. This is going to be the new general desktop format. It's going to be similar to the mobile if you're used to mobile betting. It's, it's sort of just a expanded version on a desktop right now. So all your profile information is going to be here. You have your account, detailed account history. Now, this is a situation where I'm glad we had the Q&A because we had a couple people say, I made a bet. I wanted to cancel it. I went to detailed account history to try to cancel it and I wasn't able to. This will just be from stuff from the past. Where you actually want to go, want to go to cancel a bet is in your bet section. So we'll touch upon that here in a couple minutes. But I just want everybody to understand that if you do want to cancel a bet, it'll actually be in your bet section. It will not be under your daily account history. So we do appreciate the feedback we've got from a couple of patrons who've talked about that. The the fun section, preferences, all this information is good. Uh, so just know that it's there under your profile right here. If you ever want to see what your account balance is here, just click on that. And you'll be able to see the account balance. Bet section is going to be key. When you do make a bet, all your bets will go up into your bet section. And all you have to do is click over to your My Bets. Now, we don't have anything active right now, but we will here in a second. And then you'll be able to see your ended as well just by clicking on that. And then again, navigating up top here, you'll have support. If you have questions, taking a tour, customer service, you can actually use this. If you click on OTB TV, you'll be able to see Seth this afternoon for OTB Live. Uh, we actually have two bankrolls today as well, so you definitely want to tune in for that. Free PPs, by clicking on that, it'll take you to our members page. You can go on, access free PPs. We actually have a new promotion section here on the desktop, which is nice if you want to sign up for the bankrolls or the knockout challenges or, or, or figure out when our bonus days are going to be. You can actually click on that. And then the bet now button is the most key, I believe, and that's what Seth was just talking about. That's where you'll be able to find the new classic platform and the new TV platform. You'll also be able to see that the detailed account history is under there as well, along with other numerous things as calendar, carryover, scratches and changes, results and replays. And again, all you have to do is hover over that. You don't even have to click on it and it will actually drop down. And then here's the general layout. You'll see all the tracks for the day. Utilize the favorites as well. You're going to be able to see that the stars are here. And they say you want the Saudi Cup to be one that is going to be one of your favorites for the day. And Gulfstream, since they have the Fountain of Youth, you actually click on those. And you will see that they showed up down here in your favorites category. They will also be in their own section of favorites. So you don't have to find them in all races. They're now in their own category. And you can actually click and expand on favorites here and see the, the when you know they're in race number four at Saudi uh, in the Saudi Saudi Cup right now. Gulfstream is race number one. So again, just navigating and understanding how to utilize the desktop, I think, is going to be key. You can make wager on the general desktop. So we'll do that right now. And the Saudi Cup. So we'll do race number five, since that's going to be the next upcoming race. And this is where all of your bet types are going to be, the amount that you want to put in, the runners. So we'll just do a $2 bet to win on the one. We'll submit that. You will see that it says your bet's been placed and it points up to that bet section I just talked about. That's where you're going to be able to find the bet. So if you're wondering at this point, you weren't able to see that, where your bet is, it's in the bet section. Click on My Bets. You'll see that it's active. Now, say I wanted to cancel this bet, because it's going to be a question if you're a weekend warrior and you haven't had a chance to use that yet. You're going to want to use this expanded part here. This is the expanded icon. It's three dots. Click on that to expand. You'll see that you have four icons down here. To actually cancel it, you're going to hit the trash can. It's going to ask you yes or no. We'll actually say yes to cancel it. And that's how you're able to cancel it. So that's a, a big feature that some patrons have 
uh, asked us questions about, so you can do it that way. Uh, and again, all the information that's here, jockeys, trainers, sires, uh, situation. So uh, good to use how to navigate. Again, utilize it the best way you can. But say you don't want to use the general desktop, you also have Classic, which is right here. It's, it's the, similar to the Classic platform that we had from the old desktop. And you can see that your favorites actually came over with it. So your favorites will never go away when you transfer from platform to platform, which is a nice feature. You're going to see that it, the Classic is very general as far as uh, a wagering. If you actually can't remember the horse's name, you can just hover over the number and you'll see that the horse's name pops up and you can use the classic form or if, say you wanted to see who the jockeys were the trainers etc you can go into program and this is more of the advanced stuff to see the weights trainers jockey and then there's basic and advanced here and all you have to do is click on advanced and it'll give you even more information as well so again really just comes down to navigating again click on buttons try to figure out what everything is pools will show you probables and will pays so if you wanted to see what the probables were and the will pays were, now right now we're in, we're in Lingfield, so we'll actually switch right now to the Saudi Cup. And we'll just make a quick general bet in Classic. We'll do $2 to win on the two. We'll submit this bet. The nice thing about being in Classic is your bet will stay there. It will show a check mark that it's been placed. It's still up in the bets category, which I talked about. But you can also use the repeat bet function in Classic which is huge. It's right there to the left. Say I want to repeat it, I'll click it again. It's been placed again. I'll check my balance just to make sure and you'll see we went from 30 to 26 so you can see that it's in there. And then if you wanted to double check again, you could just check your bet section in my bets category. You'll see that we're doubled up here and you can utilize that as well. So video for Classic is right here. So if you want to watch the race in Classic, just click on video. You'll be able to watch the live feed from the Saudi Cup right now. It'll pop up here in a second. And then just X out of that when you're done. And then that's pretty much all you really have to know about Classic. It's a nice, simple platform to use. And I think it's gonna be a fan favorite. And then clicking on TV here, which is the other platform. This is nice because it has a lot of features from the old TV as well. You can add in tracks by just going up to the track breakdown here and adding in a track that you don't have up in this category so we have three tracks that are up here right now so you want to add the saudi cup feed see how it popped in right here and it shows the feed right now so now you can have up to five tracks up here and you'll see that your bet pad is over here and it's very similar to classic in the fact that you have the program you have basic and advanced you know right now you can't see any of the jockeys or trainers if you want to go at advanced you'll actually see them under the name and again we'll just make a bet just like we did in classic We'll two, two to win on the one, we'll submit the bet and it'll point up there to your bet section and you can go into your bets and see what's been made and there's also the repeat bet function there as well. So again, three different platforms. You have the general desktop, you have TV, you have classic and again, navigate it to the best of your ability. If you do have questions, you can always email us at marketingmail at capitalotv.com. I'm going to be here at the clubhouse all day long. I'm going to be on with some segments uh, you know, during the afternoon to kind of show you how to make some bets as well. And then also Shannon Donovan from the marketing team is gonna be here at the clubhouse. And again, through email, if you wanna pop down to the clubhouse, we're, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, lots of great features and bells and whistles. I think you'll really enjoy the new platform. And as we said, uh, when we put together the piece, hopefully it helps people make some money because that's what it's all about. Yeah, and there's tons of information. Yeah. We didn't dive into all the information on the half an hour tutorial that we did. We dove into everything. So we did send out an email so check your personal uh, email because we have a 30 minute tutorial that we did send to everybody and that goes into everything in depth. There's so much information. There's past performances that are on here by clicking on the horse's names. You, we found sire and dam information. Again, utilize all of this and factor it into your handicapping. And it's, it's actually, it, there's it's just overloaded with good information that I, I think is gonna be important to making money. Making that's money. the bottom line, making oh, money. That's what it's all about. All right, and we hope to make some money this afternoon with our uh, bankroll. As Mike said, we have the bankroll this afternoon. You have until uh, 1 o'clock to, to show up here at the race book. Put your name in the hat. We'll select the team about that. I'll start feeling lucky? Noon time. Eh, I'm feeling lucky. I'm always feeling a little lucky when the bankroll uh, rolls You and around. Sully have a bankroll, uh, which is, is awesome. Yeah. Is Sully's team selected already? Yes. Okay, so the online team already selected. 
But uh, if you come down here live uh, and join us at the Clubhouse Racebook, that team is still to be selected. Again, you can toss your name in the hat until about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Great day of racing. And, uh, you know, Saudi Cup will, uh, undercard will continue. The Saudi Cup itself uh, goes off at uh, about 1240 and again just a phenomenal field they put up 20 million dollars and you know mckinsey and maximum security and midnight bijou and mucho gusto and an international breeders Cup classic in yeah, february it's just uh, it's it's amazing super field there that'll be a lot of fun and imperial hints on the uh the race uh, yeah, before the undercard. so if you're looking for and they have doubles that you can play so if you're looking for you know a little uh, multi-race wagering imperial hit may possibly be a single at four to five yeah. but We'll see. And uh, it's going to be a fun, fun day early. And then we move into uh, uh, the Golf Stream card, which has a great stakes card highlighted by the Fountain of Youth. Uh, great racing is always over at Oak Lawn and Tampa and Aqueduct as well on this Saturday. And then uh, nighttime thoroughbred racing is going to be available uh, today as well. So keep that in mind. Really, I, I said before, it's, uh, you know, uh, from early morning until late at night, uh, <laughs> the uh, racing all day long here at Capital OTV and Capital OTV TV. So keep that in mind today. Uh, Mike, again, uh, I'll be doing the bankroll uh, later this afternoon, and you're going to pop in and actually kind of run through a couple of those bets. Yeah, I'm actually going to put in the well. bets that you have for the bankroll uh, through the new desktop so that people that can also. see. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll try to not, we'll make it quick as far as, you know, because there's going to be a lot of racing during the afternoon. But uh, again, just want to make sure that people see they're aware and that, you know, they feel comfortable. And, and again, let me remind you uh, of those uh guaranteed pools at Golfstream a little bit later today. The Rainbow Six, they're guaranteeing 300000 The Late Pick 5 at Golfstream, half a million. The Late Pick 4 at Golfstream, three quarters of a million dollar guarantee. So it should be a lot of fun at Golfstream a little bit later on as well. Uh, the bankroll, you'll see cut-ins uh, for that during the afternoon. Should be a lot of fun. Oh, it's, gonna be, it's going to yeah. be, this is like a super Saturday, you know, when they consider, consider the morning racing with the night, you know, a lot of people always call uh, Dubai World Cup and Florida Derby Day. It's just, you know, you have one month in, in February month. and now you got the same late late uh, March uh, situation going to be coming up. And our so. colleague Brian Netto is, is going to be at Golfstream today. We may uh, check in, in with him by phone as well and just give him a little update. On it was nice to get the uh, interview with Dale Romans too because you know how big of a fan I am of Dennis' moment. So, yeah. unfortunate what happened in the Breeders' Cup. But I think he is as good as people say he is. And hopefully they will validate. He looks like he's got an edge on this group, certainly. It'll be interesting. And I should mention, I've been checking Twitter right along. Early scratches have come out. And in the Fountain of Youth, the two scratched. Uh, um, Maccabeam uh, scratched the 50-1 to 1 morning line a long shot. That one scratched. Chance it hasn't yet. I, I'm guessing they now move from the 12 to the 11. I think they want this race. Uh, so I think they'll wait and see if maybe there's another scratch. Um, and, and let me see if I can pull up those Mike Welch stats uh, that I had when I talked to Safi. Uh, since the track has been recon reconfigured, from post-12, 36 starters, three wins from post-12, uh, going this mile in a 16th distance. But now with the scratch, chance it would move to post-11. And Welch says, post 11, 4 for 54. So it's still, you're up against it a little bit from the outside. But no decision, as far as what I can see online so far, made by Safi Joseph and the team on chance. And as they say, they may just wait. Because with the stakes race, I think you can wait till a couple hours beforehand. Da, da, da. So see if, <coughs> see if one maybe one more horse goes out or, or whatever. Um, and then, you know, they would kind of find, make their final decision. But again... Keep that in mind uh, as the day goes along if you're a Chance It fan. All right, I'm trying to think if uh, we have any, any other news. I, oh, one news item I didn't mention that if, if folks didn't see is kind of interesting. Uh, Naira announced that uh, at Saratoga, paddock tent out. Um, they're, they're now going to add some green space to the paddock. That tent uh, that is right there is kind of uh, next to the walkway into the paddock. That I was surprised I read an article that had been there for 10 years. I, I didn't think it had been that long. But uh, it was kind of a nice venue for groups uh, to, to get together for lunch. I know our friends at Bonaventure would do it. That's what I was just going to say to you, the paddock tent that you guys yeah, had done they, the seminar. So it was nice, but, but I think there are kind of other venues around the track. And I think this move is being generally looked at positively, adding some more green space so folks can get up close and personal to the horses and put lawn chairs and blankets out yeah, there. That's true. That's true. I did go up one time, and I mean, it was so busy that day that if you actually remove that that part of the paddock tent you may be able to probably get 
50 to 100 more people yeah, that yeah. were able to see the horses, yeah. especially kids. You yeah. know, when you take it out family and, you know, the kids want to see the horses and you start to get those really big lines, I think just, just they just need more space. Yeah, so. I think that's, uh, as I say, I think it's being uh, responded to positively. And, and so that'll be a little change up there at Saratoga this summer. All right, we're going to wrap things up for Racing Across America. Get you back to uh, Saudi Cup action. Also, the uh, pregame show, Golf Stream starts today, first post at 11.30, so I would assume the pregame show will come on sooner rather than later. They're showing uh, replays from yesterday right now. Uh, they're up to race eight, and so uh, I would guess maybe 10.15 or certainly by 10.30 the pregame will come on down at Golf Stream. So we wanted to get off in time for uh, you to check that out. And so an early version of Racing Across America. Thanks again to Safi Joseph and Dale Romans for joining us. Mike, thanks for coming in. Little thanks. Good luck to everybody today. I hope fun. everybody hits it big today. It's one of those days where it's going to be fun. Day. You know, it's exciting in the morning, and then hopefully it's exciting when it's all over. So <laughs> We're smiling now. Hopefully we're still smiling later on. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our friends at Gulfstream for their sponsorship. Gulfstream Park champions start here enjoy the uh, saudi cup racing uh we'll be back a little bit later this afternoon with those cut-ins with the bankroll we'll see you then